Welcome to this video on interpreting the full blood count, designed to cover everything you need to know as a medical student, junior doctor, or anyone else wanting to understand the full blood count. By the end of this video, you'll know what each component of the full blood count means, what causes them to be abnormal, and how to correct abnormal results. Normal reference ranges will be shown later in the video. Full blood count essentially tests the cells in our blood which can broadly be categorised into red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Let's go through these one at a time, starting with the red blood cells. There are three measurements taken from red blood cells that we can interpret. Firstly, haemoglobin, which is the iron-containing protein found inside red cells that allows them to carry oxygen. When looking at the full blood count report, this can be high, meaning that patients have polycythemia, or it can be low. In anemia. Causes of polycythemia are polycythemia vera, which is a myeloproliferative disorder where the bone marrow produces excess red blood cells. This is rare but can be fatal if not treated. COPD can also increase haemoglobin, as patients are often hypoxic for prolonged periods of time. This induces a rephropoietin release from the kidneys, which promotes red blood cell production in the bone marrow. Living at altitude will also increase haemoglobin, as will taking exogenous EPO, for example, in naughty professional cyclists. Polycythemia is bad, as it can be symptomatic for patients, for example, itching. But its most serious complication is blood clots. It's therefore an important condition to diagnose and manage. Long-term aspirin can be used to help reduce the risk of blood clotting. Venusection, or bloodletting, can be used to reduce the total volume of red cells present in the blood. Hydroxycarbamide is a specialist medication used to treat polycythemia vera. Anemia means low haemoglobin. When trying to decipher the cause, it's useful to also look at the mean cell volume. Depending on the MCV value, anemias can be categorised into microcytic, meaning small red cells, normocytic, meaning normal sized red cells, or macrocytic, where the red cells are large. Each of these has different causes. Microcytic anemias are often caused by iron deficiency. This could be due to blood loss, celiac disease, or poor dietary intake. Anemia of inflammation is where a chronic inflammatory condition lowers haemoglobin over time. This can also cause anormocytic anemia. Thalassemia is an inherited condition where there is a reduction in the amount of haemoglobin produced. Normocytic anemia can be caused by myeloma, which is a bone marrow cancer that results in pancytopenia, meaning red cells, white cells, and platelets are all low. It can also be caused by acute blood loss and anemia of inflammation. Macrocytic anemias are linked with B12 and folate deficiency. Hemolysis, which is the degradation of red blood cells. This can be caused by infection, autoimmune hemolysis, or a condition called spherocytosis, where the red cells are spherical rather than concave shaped. Chronic alcohol consumption and hypothyroidism can also cause macrocytic anemia. Most commonly, anemia will cause the patient to be short of breath, tired, have palpitations and be pale. Management should be focused on the underlying cause of anemia. If severe enough, Patients may also require a blood transfusion. We typically give blood transfusions when haemoglobin falls to 70 or below. Hematocrit is the third measurable component of red cells. This is the percentage of blood that is made up of red blood cells. It generally follows the same trend as haemoglobin. It can either be affected by the number of red blood cells or the volume of blood plasma. As part of the full blood count, we also have the white blood cell count and the white cell differential made up of specific cells that make up the total white cell count. Leukocytosis is most commonly associated with an infection, but it's not that specific, so it can also be present with any ongoing inflammation, post-surgery, with steroid use and in pregnancy. Leukopenia can be caused by hematinic deficiency, i.e. B12, folate or iron. Bone marrow failure will cause leukopenia as part of a pancytopenia, 
This can have a range of causes, including acute leukaemia, chemotherapy, and aplastic anemia. Sepsis and some medications can also reduce the white cell count. The white cell differential is often overlooked, but can be useful for identifying more specific disease. Generally, raised lymphocytes can be associated with viral infections and raised neutrophils with bacterial infections. Basophils and eosinophils can be raised in atopy, for example, asthma or allergies. Eosinophils are also specific for some parasitic infections, like helminths. Finally, we have platelets. Thrombocytosis can be reactive, meaning the platelets will increase in response to infection or inflammation. We can also have essential thrombocythemia, which is another type of myeloproliferative disorder, and underlying malignancy. Thrombocytopenia can be caused by bone marrow failure, DIC, or immune thrombocytopenia, which is an autoimmune disease. If platelets are low enough, or if there is concurrent bleeding, the patient may require a platelet transfusion. However, it's important to be aware that transfusing platelets in a patient with immune thrombocytopenia will not be a good long-term solution, as the patient's own immune system will continue to destroy platelets. To summarise, the full blood count analyses the red cells, white cells and platelets, which make up the cellular components of our blood. There are various causes for high or low levels of these components, so a full blood count can help narrow your differentials and also monitor ongoing treatment. Please consider subscribing and liking the video. It helps my channel out a lot. Thanks for watching and see you next time.